नमस्कार वेलकम टू यूनिट एट पार्ट वन जर्नी थ्रू अ म्यूजियम लेट्स बिगिन विद द ऑब्जेक्टिव इन दिस यूनिट वी एम एट फेमिलराइजिंग यू विद म्यूजियम इंफॉर्मेशन सेकेंड प्रोवाइडिंग यू विद द स्किल्स नीडेड टू डिस्क्राइब अ म्यूजियम टू विजिटर्स टेकिंग यू ऑन अ जर्नी थ्रू द प्रिंस ऑफ वेल्स म्यूजियम मुंबई एज अ केस स्टडी and giving you details about certain other activities performed by a museum introduction in this block you have so far discovered local history described taj mahal to your tourist clients and have taken them on a path finding trip with sherpa we now plan to take you on a journey through a museum this will enable you to understand the peculiarities and attractions of a museum you will then be in a better position to take your tourist groups on similar journeys through a variety of museums that exist in almost all parts of our country we have chosen for you a very well known museum that is prince of wales museum mumbai for this john The choice has been guided primarily by the fact that this one of the best kept museums of India and it houses some splendid collections and detailing the ancient most history of India understanding a museum as a tourist guide or otherwise also when you take visitors to a museum it is important for you to know the variety and the range of the collections housed there This information is of immense help to you in catering to the tourist who may not have common taste for all the things kept in the museum. On the contrary, it is most often the case that there are many different interests in a group of tourist as is their actual count. In such situations, the variety and the range of your knowledge regarding the exhibits of a museum will stand you in good stead you will also find this information handy in deciding to curtail or extend the visit of the group to a museum and may at times reap rich dividends if you succeed in evoking the appreciation of the tourist for the varieties and the artistic merit of the exhibits we shall therefore insist that you collect detailed information about the museum arrange this information in convenient categories occasionally shift your information regularly update this information besides when you guide visitors to a museum you should make sure how much time the visitors have to spend there and know the area of their interest accordingly you can also adjust your commentary or exhibits and decide what to show gloss over or give a passing reference only journey through a museum now that you know how we are going to discuss this unit we take you on a journey through prince of wales museum mumbai all along this journey we shall be your guide you should swap this role of a guide for yourself when you take your group of tourist on a similar journey to this or any other museum since the characters of different museums differ from each other this journey aims at presenting only a model you may have to make suitable adjustments or alterations in your scheme for different museums let's begin with the background information Prince of Wales Museum is a major place of tourist interest. It is situated in South Bombay at a convenient location where buses are easily available. It is surrounded by other places of tourist interests. Annually about 1 million visitors visit this museum. It is a well known for its rare collections as well as its modern display in the galleries. A museum houses historical objects but is also has a history of its own. It is always good to start our journey with making brief statements about the origin, development and the collections displayed in the museum. The genesis of the museum at Bombay lies in the resolve of the British Indian government 
to provide a home for the archaeological specimens collected by Mr. Henry Cousins, the then superintendent of Archaeological Survey of India, Western Circle, added the collections of works of art available at Sir S. S. School of Art and elsewhere. The government also thought that with the Museum of Art and Archaeology, there should be combined museum for science and natural history. It was specified that the main object of the museum should be educational. Here is the, an example given of Prince of Wales Museum. Its location is 159 by 61 MG Road, Fort Mumbai. Telephone numbers, then there are timings from 10 am to 6 pm. It is closed on all Mondays and 26 January and 15th August and admission fee is below 12 years of age and students companied by teachers. Baggage not allowed inside the museum and museum it is to be deposited at the museum counter. Photography is allowed on payment and colored picture, postcards and greeting cards, colored reproductions and publications are available at the publication counter. At the public meeting held in Bombay on 14th August 1905, it was decided to create a permanent memorial to the royal visit in November 1905. The government provided the consent site measuring about 4 acres for the museum. In the presence of distinguished gathering, Prince of Wales laid the foundation of the museum building on 11 November 1905. Hence the name Prince of Wales Museum being designated. Designs for the building were invited by competition and finally Mr. G. Witter, the then consulting architect to government, built the main building in the Indo-Sarajanic style. You will be surprised to know that the Gol Gumbad as Bijapur influenced the architecture of the museum. For the building locally available, basal stone was used. The building was completed in 1914, but due to World War I, it was handed over to military for hospital purposes. Subsequently, it was used for children's welfare exhibition. It was finally made over to the Board of Trustees of the museum in April 1921. The management and maintenance of the museum was entrusted to a board of trustees created under the Prince of Wales Museum Act of 1909. The museum was finally opened to the public on 10 January 1922. Let's move forward and discuss the plan and the layout. The plan of the museum is quite simple. There is a central hall from which the staircase take you to the first and then the second floor. The galleries containing the exhibits run on both sides of the central approach. The plan is given below. It is not drawn to the scale but has been properly labelled. The plan is in three parts. The ground floor A, the first floor B, the second floor C. The labelling in each of those floors has been described below. Ground floor, it has reception and publication counter, Kumar Swami Hall, Key Gallery, Toilets, a Siren Palace Reliefs, Pre and Proto History, Stone Sculptures, Water Coolers, Birds, Mammals and Reptiles and Fishes. On first floor, Main Administrative Office, Indian Miniature Paintings, Decorative Arts, Indian Bronzes, Research Library, Nepal and Tibetan Art, Maritime Heritage of India. On second floor, Indian Arms, European Decorative Arts, European Paintings, Indian Textile, Far Eastern Art. The collection at the museum has been classified in four main sections. Archaeology, Art, Painting, and natural history. The central hall on the ground floor as you enter the museum has been converted into the key gallery. It serves as an introductory gallery of the museum where few specimens from larger galleries are displayed. The showcases contain the miniature paintings, 
Indian jade work, weapons and objects of decorative arts, Chinese and Japanese exhibits, ivory work, woodwork, akhnu terracettes, colored tiles, stone sculptures, terracottas from Mohanjadaro and of historical period, Indian bronzes, Mirpur Khas terracottas. By walking around Key Gallery, you experience five millenniums of Indian art in one capsule. This much basic information acquaints you somewhat with the museum. You now know which part to skip or show as per the interest of the visitor if time is short. You may now come with us on a trip to its various section housing priceless exhibits from the remotest part of India to its current cultural scene. The first one is the archaeological section. Well, in this section are on display the most ancient exhibits, pre and proto-historic exhibits. The Indian Paleolithic specimens are from Kuda and Bileri districts. Other tools were presented by the Deccan College Postgraduate Research Institute, Pune. The Middle Stone Age tools and some fossils were also presented by the Deccan College. The Neolithics which comprises cells and hammer stones are from Amravati and Perumbar. There are also implements from Banda. These were presented by the VP State Museum, Lucknow. The antiquities of Indus Valley culture are from Rangpur, Najungdara, Kotpich and Hisbani. The antiquities include plain and painted pottery, beads and bangles, seals and ceilings, tools and toys, mother goddesses, fish hooks, shell spoons, saddle quims and muller, grains, weights, bricks, storage jars and stone objects. The diorama depicts of the great bath and town planning of Mohanjadaro. The Chalokolithic phase in Maharashtra is shown by models of pottery, baking clean and burial pottery. The finds are from Jore, Nasik, Nivasa and Inamgao. The antiquities from the Iron Age are from Adichnalur and Purumber. They include iron implements, pottery bowls and burial urns. One end of the gallery displays unique Assyrian palace reliefs from Nimrod, a slab from Persepolis and two fragments from Egypt. Now let's study stone sculptures. The most important example are from Pithaclora, Elephanta and Ahole. The museum has varied collection of Gandhara sculptures depicting the Jataka stories and some decorative designs. The stucco examples include heads and figures of Buddha, Bodhisattvas, donors and musicians. The Siva Gana from Khoa and another loin-faced Gana from Madhya Pradesh show the Gupta idiom at its best. The figures of the Buddha from Mirpur Khas show transformation from the Gandhara to Gupta idiom, while the figures of the donor and Kubera show well-developed Gupta types. A major part of the sculpture in the museum is medieval, drawn from almost all parts of India. The 8th century bas relief from a hole depicting Brahma seated on lotus points, a landmark in early Chalukya sculpture and another Brahma image from Elephanta excludes strength of purpose. Later sculptures from other parts of the Deccan, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat and Karnataka are imbued with a decorative spirit. The next ones are bronzes. One of the earliest bronzes is of Parsavnatha from eastern India of 2nd century AD. In 1967, Sri Mahindra Kumar Gupta presented to the museum 29 bronzes from the collection of late Srimati Amravati Gupta, which includes some important examples of Eastern Indian bronzes, Padmapani from Kashmir, Buddha from Nagapattinam and Maitreya from Nepal. Among the outstanding examples 
mention may be made of two Vishnu images of Pallava period, Rishabhanatha from Chahardi of Rutrashukta period and Bahabali from Sarvarna Belgola of Ganga period. There are also some images of Chola period. You must remember here that the minimum skill required is the knowledge of history, particularly art history. You must read authentic books in this regard to update yourself. The next one is Terracottas. Majority of the Terracottas in the museum collection come from Mirpur Khas and only a few specimens from Rajghat and Mathura, they fall under four chronological divisions via Maurya, Sungha, Kushna and Gupta. The excess collection from Mirpur Khas is kept in the reserve. The next is inscriptions and coins. The copper plate inscriptions are now kept in the reserve collection. Two fragmentary stone edicts, 8 and 9 from Sapora, Su Kekta Varnam's inscription from Thane and beautifully engraved Thar inscription are of special importance. Others include Silhara and Kannada epigraphs. The three Kufic inscriptions are from South Arabia are of special importance on paleographic grounds. Other Islamic inscriptions are in Nakshi and Nastalik scripts. A very fine specimen of the art of calligraphy of the charming Nastalik script is to be seen in the inscription from Surat which describes the foundation of a Kara Vasnari laid by Ishaq Bag, an important official of Shah Jah. Besides these, there are some inscriptions in cuneiform script and some other from Saudi Arabia. An excellent coin collection numbering over 3700 is kept in strong room. The range is from punch marked coins of 6th century to the minted coins of the East India Company. The collection is rich in coins of Gujarat Sultans, Mughals and the native states. The gold coins numbering 1153 include some fine specimen of Kushana and Gupta period and the Zodic coins of Jahangir. The next one is the art section. The art section exhibits are of various kinds. We will describe them below. First, the decorative arts. The ivory Buddhist figures in the museum representing the meditation of Buddha and the figure of Avlokiteshvara stand as the highest landmark in the art of ivory carvings in India. The museum possesses a carved ivory box of Vijayangara period, a royal portrait of the Nayak period. The museum has a good collection of Gujarat woodwork. It includes the figures of dancers, musicians and chori bearers. The most important of them, however, is the elaborately carved and painted Jain Mandapa of 16th to 17th century, probably from Patan. There is a teak wood cabinet specially prepared for Sir Dorab Tata after the style of Birbal's palace at Fatehpur Sikri. Among several examples of sandalwood carving from Karnataka, the most important of them all is a rectangular casket elaborately carved with mythological scenes, floral and animal designs. The chief articles of jade and crystals of the Mughals period on display are cups, trays, spice boxes, spoons, balls, sword and dagger handles. The museum has a good collection of these. The next is arms and armors. Different kinds of swords, daggers, knives, spears, battle axes, cookeries, and matchlocks manufactured between the 16th and 17th century form valuable collection. Among the historical weapons may be mentioned the swords of Sultan Alauddin Khilji, Shah Jahan, and Aurangzeb. The shield of Akbar demands date with zodical symbols is dated 1593 AD. Mention also may be made of personal armor suit of Humayu and Akbar. The next is Indian textile. The museum has some selected examples of 18th century Kashmir shawls, 
patkas and kamarbands the collection of 18th century brocades includes sarees of banaras surat and aurangabad origin the patola silk in the museum is interesting specimen of tie dye variety from india it also has a good number of sarees and turbans printed by a wax printing process of tanjore far eastern art the chinese and japanese collection from the house of to include porcelain ivory objects object of jade and other semi precious stones crystal objects snuff bottles and embroidery work there are also examples of lacquer work next is maritime heritage of india this gallery was recently set up with the cooperation of indian navy and to show the origin and spread of maritime activity in india from the time to the medieval period through antiquities models charts maps and photographs there are plans to extend the gallery to include the modern period also the next is the painting section this section houses three main categories of the painting the indian miniature painting the museum has a fine illustrative manuscripts of kalpa sutra and the kala ka chakra ya katha datable to the end of 14th century the lord chanda painting show the sultanat idiom at its best the geeta govinda paintings in the same style show more developed form the museum has some interesting examples of the akbar period paintings which includes fine portraits and folios from the razmnama and the ramayana and the illustrated ms of anwar e sulahi paintings of the jahangir period include one depicting his visit to saint chishti mausoleum at ajmer portraits of nobles and above all some animals and birds drawing for which his period was known the painting of shah jahan's period include portraits of emperor his forefathers his son dara shikhon and sufi sen The period of Aurangzeb is represented by portraits, convivial scenes, and pictures illustrating the life or the period. The museum has some interesting paintings of the Bijapur school, which include a convivial gathering and some excellent portraits of Muhammad Adil Shah. The largest painting on cloth, the procession of Abdullah Qutb Shah on the throne, and Chand Bibi and her maidens in the museum collection. are interesting examples of the art of golconda in the middle of the 17th century the later phase of golconda school is represented by ragmala sets portraits and drinking scenes the collection of the rajasthani painting in the museum is both rich and varied one may enjoy in the gallery the rich color of the mewar and marwar schools the dramatic landscapes of bundi bundi and the lyricism of kishangarh school the museum has some interesting early bishali paintings depicting some rurals rulers a number of paintings of jammu schools depict raja balwant singh engaged in various occupation second modern paintings important additions have been made to the paintings in the art section since 1923 by the acquisition of paintings by indian arts of the bengal bombay and other indian schools and by a number of prints depicting old bombay presented by mr f v evans next is the western paintings the two large halls on the second floor of the museum are used for the displaying western paintings these were received from the house of tatas some of the important paintings of well known artists are mentioned below the muses on mount helicon nicolas poussin french school the greatest master of the classical french school the sword of domicles large size impressive painting portrait of four women after rembrandt french school venus and adonis carlo melati roman school shepherdness and sheep troyon french school the cleaner john philip british school portrait of a lady g rooney british school next is the natural history section 
This action established under the terrace of agreement arrived between Bombay Natural History Society and the trustees of Prince of Wales Museum in 1923. Deputation of Mr. S. H. Prater, curator of the museums in England, America and the continent in 1922 and 26 was of great use in the successful establishment of educational services and methods of display in the gallery by introducing dioromas. Even the internationally famous ornithologist Mr. Salim Ali served as curator for a short duration. The section consists of Bombay Natural History Society's interesting collections of birds, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, fish and invertebrates. Bird Gallery This gallery shows a variety of birds from all over India. An endeavor is being made to show a series of group cases illustrating the nesting habits of Indian birds. These include the nests of tailor bird, weaver bird, night herons and the most notable the great Indian hornbill. The three dioromas in the gallery show vultures, flamingos and Himalayan beaded vultures. The mammal gallery. The most impressive dioromas in the gallery display bison, black buck and great Indian bastard, spotted deer, Bengal tigers and the majestic Kashmir stag. Some of the animals which died in Bombay Zoo such as rhino and white tiger have been also displayed in this gallery. Reptiles, amphibians and fishes. The exhibits in the gallery include crocodiles, common Indian lizards, group of water monitors, snakes, rissel viper with young ones, cobra nesting in an anthill, sea snakes in a coral reef showing adaption of snakes to an aquatic life, checkered water snake showing color variation in the snake, green whip snake and green pit viper showing color resemblance in snakes, frogs, freshwater fishes, giant perch caught in Bombay Harbour. The dioromas show Malayan python, sharks and turtles laying eggs. Invertebrates, a series of student cases intended as an introduction to the study of insects show the models of housefly, mosquitoes, bed bug and head louse. Exhibits illustrate how diseases are spread by insects and how they may be prevented. Classification and distribution of Indian insects are also shown. Indian marine and land shells are also on the display. This gallery at present close to the public. The natural history section is very popular among youngsters. Next we will proceed to the educational activities. The museum with such enormous and varied collection as you have just now seen during your journey through the galleries of the Prince of Wales Museum Bombay serve as ideal places for carrying out educational activities. We give you below details relating to the museum at Bombay. You might benefit from the information in case some or more members of the tourist group you take around gallery show interest in such activities. Children's Creative Centre in the museum premises is used for children's activity. Educational officer of the museum invites school children accompanied by their teacher and delivers slide lecture and later they are taken around the museum galleries. During summer and winter vacation classes are arranged to teach children clay modelling, painting and paper crafts. Next is exhibitions. Museum periodically holds exhibition on different themes. It has also participated in festivals of India abroad by holding exhibitions in Sweden, uh, Sweden, Japan and Mauritius. Catalogues of Sweden and Japan exhibitions are published. Occasionally, museum arranges lectures by eminent scholars for the benefit of the public. Kuruswami Memorial Lecture by a renowned scholar is an annual feature. Kumra Swami Hall is used for holding exhibitions and lecture. It is also given on hire to outside parties for sale exhibitions on rental basis. A few enthusiastic ladies from Bombay started a society about 25 years ago to act as friends of the museum. This is the first society of its kind in India. It has its own membership and periodically arranges lectures and visits for the benefit of its members in the cooperation with the museum. Next is research. The museum is recognized as postgraduate research institute for guiding PhD students studying Indian art. Museum is permanently affiliated 
to the Bombay University. This is a very fine research library for the study of Indian art and architecture. It has books on natural history. Here one can find all latest information, important publications including periodicals. A researcher can refer to this library with the title permission of the director of the museum. Books cannot be issued out of this library. Next is reprography and conversation. The museum has a well equipped photography studio with a dark room, equipment for film development and photo enlargements. It supplies black and white prints at reasonable rates to scholars. Museum has a very good photo archives and a collection of color slides which are used for lectures and publications. The restoration studio of the museum is equipped for the restoration of oil paintings. Museum also has a laboratory for chemical treatment of antiquities. Let's now sum up. Undoubtedly, Prince of Wales Museum is an important museum out of nearly 400 museums in our country. It is very popular with foreign and domestic visitors who visit it in large numbers. The museum houses some rare exhibits which are not to be seen elsewhere. The display using proper color scheme, lighting and labeling is adequate and pleasing to the eye. Cleanliness is maintained inside the showcases and outside as well. On the whole, this is a well-maintained museum which makes many visitors to visit it more than once. The educational activities for the primary and secondary school level and also for college students are comprehensive. Guidance is given to the postgraduate students in their chosen subjects for doctoral studies. We hope that you have got sufficient clues as to how to show and explore in the museum. You can apply this museums in your areas. In the next presentation, we will study more about the next museum. Thank you for viewing.